Okay, so hi, um, this is Joe Maycook. I'm here on site at the Glen Ford Community Garden at Glen Ford on the Delaware, Northeast Philadelphia. Um, and uh, with the Community Gardens Memory Project, also known as the Cultivating Community Gardens Histories Project with the Pennsylvania Horticultural Society. And today I am here um, with uh, two longtime uh, members slash assistants of the community garden, um, Mike Sutton uh, and Pam Henschel. Yes. 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 And so before, you both have had really long careers at the community garden. Um, Mike, you helped develop the garden, as I understand it. And Pam, you've been on the, uh, you've been in a member of the garden for four years at this point, since mm -hmm. 2018, the second year. Um, but before we get into all of that, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about your backgrounds, if that's okay. So where did you both grow up and did you or your neighbors have gardens there? Um, I've grown up in this area, probably two or three miles from here. Um, did gardening at the house, it was something that my uh, mother liked to do. Um, so I was familiar with uh, eating fresh tomatoes, you know, and growing basil, <laughs> things like that. Nothing too complicated, but yes. Um, always had a, uh, being a landscaper and being outside all the time, um, you know, enjoy the outdoors and appreciate, you know, all, all forms of it. Mm -hmm. So I spent the majority of my life growing up in and living in South Jersey. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm obviously lean toward that South Jersey tomato. Uh, <laughs> I'm also a first generation American on my mother's side. My mother's British. So therefore, it's in my DNA. So we have an, always have had an extensive flower garden and vegetable garden. And so it was something that I was raised um, tending to, appreciating, and making sure that there's always, there's always that fresh fruits and vegetables every mm -hmm. time you have an opportunity to do so. Of course, with the flowers as well, because that's a passion is along mm -hmm. with that. Yeah, so both of your first memories of gardening although you had slightly different upbringings, were with your mother, um, your mothers, and they were the people who taught you how to garden. Correct. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, and also you got the tomatoes going for both of you. There's a recurring theme I'm starting to notice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's, yeah. it's because of the area. It's, you know, it's, it's just part of a, yeah. well, thankful it's a staple in the Yeah, well, diet. thankful to my mother. She grew up in uh, a fairly rural uh, part of Richmond, Virginia, at a time when... Um, on, on a farm at a time when you know farming is they're, 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 you, you're, you're, you want food you're growing it and you're, then you're, you get to eat it right my father didn't like anything that was green <laughs> if it was green it didn't get eaten okay so fortunate for me you know that, that, that my mom's heritage and you know lineage and all that stuff or whatever is where you know my, my passion came from and I also had the advantage of my children's grandfather was a master gardener, and he had a very extensive plot. Uh, his house had a second plot next to it, and they, he grew just about everything. So learning from him was really very uh, eye-opening. So your, your father-in-law. Yes. Yes. Yeah. This is the Master Gardener program. Master Gardener, and he he took many many classes. It was a passion of his, and and it was that through him is where I understood the 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 delight of having a ear of corn. While the water is boiling, you walk out to the garden and slice an ear of corn. There's nothing by comparison. Yes. Yeah. One of the first things I noticed when I came to this garden first was Lisa Carpenter. Um, who has been on the board um, and also is a long time member is the the corn yes. so tall um, yeah. so yeah so yeah. lush yeah um, but so uh, normally this is the point where I ask how did you come to your current community garden but I think we're going to start um, with Mike's story in particular because you helped develop the garden with former director Meg Sharp Walton um, so talk to me about that process yeah, I mean, Meg was uh, was an advocate of uh, everything outside, you know, at, at Glen Ford. And, um, you know, we've talked with her, you know, about all kinds of things that, uh, all the time about how we can improve the property or regain areas that were overgrown and that type of thing. So every year, 
it seemed like that we would take on another, you know, project, you know, because money is always an issue towards these things or whatever. But then, you know, it was the fall of probably 14, maybe, that she had talked about, um, you know, putting in a community garden. Where that initially came from, in her mind, I'm not really sure. Um, but um, it was something normally with Meg, if she, you know, started talking about something that more than likely was going to happen at some point. Mm-hmm. And um, so uh, I know she had talked about it that fall and then, you know, being um, bound to some degree to the city, um, she had to get the uh, approvals, you know, through Fairmount because the property is owned by the park system. Um, my understanding at second hand is that um, it didn't go over well. Um, I remember her telling me that um, that she was told that it, it you know, wasn't something that uh, they were really for, that these um, gardens eventually become overrun, um, not maintained properly, and, and could potentially turn into an eyesore. Um, so this was, you know, this was something that she was told, like I said, through the city, um, and. Meg, being a uh, strong-willed woman, um, kind of just played past that. She, she didn't feel that that was going to be the situation here. Um, and so kind of pushed forward. At the time, we were having um, Comcast. We're doing a uh, volunteer days where they would bring, you know, a, a lot of um, employees from Comcast would come and do stuff on the property. So she, you know, worked it out timing-wise that... Um, that on their day that they were coming to do their, uh, um, you know, volunteer work, um, that we would utilize the labor force and uh, get the get the community garden up and running. Um, we had a, 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 a temporary um, gardener that was here that would go and uh, clean up beds and do stuff around the around the property. He did a layout. Of uh, once we figured out the location and how we wanted to look, um, Meg had done some research and figured out that this area here, the spot where it's at, was actually part of the original farm area um, that where they were growing vegetables for the you know for for the mansion, and that uh, you know part of that was I think her wanting to make sure that where they were placing the garden was correct with the historical part of the property so that we're not putting you know a vegetable garden on top of an old cemetery or something you know what I mean so and I think it was part of her also wanting to make sure that when um, the city would come out and and probably you know show maybe a little bit of uh, negativity towards the whole thing that she had at least a little bit of ammunition back saying that this was a garden previously and and you know we're, we're going to make sure that it's uh, you know up to up to standards and all those kind of things so fortunately for like i said for the garden the gardeners and all that stuff that meg you know fought through all that and then decided you know we just move forward so with the help of comcast uh, with the help of our gardener we, we did the layout um, I had a backhoe here, so I dug out the plots. We just removed the uh, the grass off. Um, we went up and bought uh, lumber, rough cut lumber from a uh, from a mill up in Bucks County, which was nice because we were supporting him also. Um, and uh, that was it's Brian's Brian's farm is what that's called. But uh, so all that being said, like you know, we had put the uh, put all the boxes together mm-hmm. they're just rough cut like three inch three by ten or three by twelve oak planks some of them might be Nash and then uh, Meg approved to get the, we knew we needed to put some fencing around it we needed to get water to it we had a temporary water source coming out of the one cottage and then uh, you know it just kind of took off from there yeah and so so you were you have been um, you were at that time, and you still remain, man, like the grounds manager here. More or um, less, yeah. I'm a yeah. subcontractor at the place, but yeah. So I've been here 22, 23 years. Wow. And so, as Pam mentioned before the interview, um, when we were just chatting, 
that you also are one of the people, you are the person to talk to about the grounds history and about the history of the different plants around here. So one thing that I, that, that also struck me when I first came to the garden is that you have these rows of historic grapevines on either side. Um, so could you talk to me a little bit about the, about those grapevines and about their history? Yeah, I mean, I don't know much about it other than the fact that they were uh, part of uh, Florence's, um, you know, farming program that she had here because mm -hmm. they were sustaining themselves to some degree. Right. Um, and that, so that wasn't something that was ever added uh, because, to be honest with you, you know, all the directors that played through here in the past weren't into, uh, you know, adding much to the property. Everything is just, um, you know, the damage control, try to maintain it as it is type thing. Um, so literally other than memorial trees that have been planted, you know, haphazardly over the years, everything that's on this property other than something that's, you know, came from a seed pod off of another tree, you know, was planted by her. Um, and, you, you know, if you think about it too, like the, those varieties that she had planted were purposeful. It was for canning, you know, it wasn't probably made for fine wine. Mm -hmm. So, so there's going to be, you know, they were going to be made into some type of, you know, jelly, jelly or jam that yeah. can be preserved. You know, that's that's how a lot of these, you know, a lot of the, the people back in the day had done things. Um, so yeah, so I don't know how many of those cultivars are left. Um, there was a gentleman that came through here um, when we were doing the, the garden that had known what he was doing or whatever and looked at him and he said, "There's cultivars that are in here." in his mind that may not even exist anymore because you, you know if it's on some type of um winery or whatever they turn them over they make them they make you know the grapes for uh you know for other purposes or whatever but he was he was pretty intrigued by it but yeah so again we're fortunate enough now we have some volunteers that come in um and they they tinker around with with the grapevines to some degree there's some pruning and stuff that's happened over the last couple of years, they've actually gotten better. I can tell they 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 look really prolific to me, at yeah. least compared to the other grapevines I've seen around the city. Um, yeah, it's... city grapevines are are, are, are are like wild grapes. Right. Yeah, <laughs> right. And I mean, because you don't you something else I noticed you don't have a lot of lantern flies here. It seems like. Well, this year it's improved. Yeah. The two years ago, uh, the family and the. Uh, gatehouse and myself were on a mission and we each would start and we each had a different method on trying to eradicate the lanternfly and we would each start at one end and we'd meet in the middle and pass they were using a little uh, dust buster and sucking up the the lantern flies and i was going along and spraying them with a an eco-friendly solution mm -hmm. and so the two of us were and it for two years we did this but this yeah. year it's been a lot more uh, it's a, it's been, it's improved. I don't know if they've moved on, but um, I would like to think that we help had a hand in that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was it was a concerted effort to yeah. make sure that these grapevines were yeah, and they're still, last they're, another hundred years if possible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, and, and they are like I said, they are still being maintained. Or, or um, we we have a part time gardener, um, Andrea, who um, has spent some time on them. So, so it's, it's, it's kind of nice in a way that, you know, things that have been put here for a purpose, you know, get, get some, some attention. Yeah. They, you, they've been here for, like you said, yeah. like a, a, roughly a hundred years, given that Florence planted them in the early yeah. 20th century. So, and yeah. that's a nod to just because of the, the origin of this gar this community garden, uh, is with Meg as the director and, and I can't speak for directors prior to her because I met her in 2015 uh, that she did focus on as to Mike's point on the property the entire property and that incorporated the clearing of the tennis courts now that was a forest when I first started coming on the property and Mike cleared it out and made it the beautiful Prada land that it is now and this has evolved since I've been involved for over five years because of the fact that they're Meg and Meg was also uh, was 
in particular, because we're talking about the garden and we're talking about outside, she was very particular about the historic significance of making sure that it is, it is replacing what was there. It was not, uh, it was not uh, willy nilly. It, there, it was purposeful. Yes. Yeah. So, I want to backtrack a little bit um, because uh, you talked like that. Uh, that discussion of the lanternfly um, elimination program is very, very great, and I think it's a good segue into how you also came to the garden. So let's go back to, you know, you, um, your story, Mike, about how you uh, made the oak slash ash um, boxes that would become the raised beds. So how did you both get involved in the gardening? I was involved because of Mike. So I was fortunate enough to uh, have an opportunity to move in the cottage on the property in 2019 in February. <laughs> and that the season that followed, uh, Mike and came to me and said, let's, let's go in together on this. And I was a little intimidated because of the fact that uh, I've had only my own backyard vegetable garden and to go into a little bit more of an extensive project. Uh, but the two of us together, and it, it, it worked out well. But Mike was my, was encouraged me to come in and participate. It was more. That was just more me knowing that I have a full time, you know, caretaker that lives five feet away from the garden. <laughs> so, so that was. So just, I worked on the garden. He, right, he so benefited just, with the tomatoes. You're right. So <laughs> that was just that was just me being. You, you know what I mean? Knowing, well, it worked. Knowing it, yeah. Sucked me in. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now, now, I, now I get the uh, the benefit of uh, just showing up and grabbing some, you know, yeah. some veggies and running. But very self interest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's okay. Yeah. It's yeah. okay. It's well, all, all in this you know, together. When you spend, you know, I, I, I spend 10, 12, 14 hours. Who knows what you know how many hours here? Anyhow, yeah. but but it, it, it never gets old to me. You, you, you know what I mean? But it was mm -hmm. just yeah. It was just uh, yeah. There there was a little self interest there. But yeah. It's all good. Well, on the other hand, you're helping maintain the grounds surrounding the garden in addition to anything that you do in the garden itself. So right, right. you're both getting things out of this arrangement yeah. that make it possible. Yeah, this way when I reach over the fence and grab a tomato, I'm not, I'm not feeling too bad about it. Yes, yeah, so you, <laughs> prevented, you prevented ticks from occurring here by cutting the grass. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, so um i wanted to so you've been here since 2019 correct living here yes you've been living here since 2019 and in the yeah and then you've been growing in the garden since um that season yeah pretty much. yes okay um so both of you and you've been on the board as well yes um uh and um but yeah so y and yeah and you're still a member and you both have been involved so i wanted to ask from your perspective about you know, if you could walk me through a year in the community garden, um, what traditions characterize garden work for you? Hmm. It's a, it's a <laughs> to me, it's, it's the, as the gardener, he's obviously has a little bit more of an extensive um, active role, but it's, it's literally taking the soil from the beginning of the season and, and making sure that, I always say that I'm not, I'm not happy unless I have soil under my fingernails, in a sense where, don't look because I have them off now. No, I, <laughs> I just took them I, off I'm lately, yeah. <laughs> but I normally do. But uh, because of the fact that you're getting in and you're getting involved and you're getting one with the earth, I know it sounds cheeky, but it's true. And you're getting and you're developing this soil in order for you to prepare to move something living to be able to develop grow parent foster <laughs> care for but i and i think it's the fact that it's the process of from a beginning to the end and even in the end when you're clearing away and you know that you're turning the soil over and you're making sure that it's fresh you it's almost as if it's not sad because it's preparing it for the next growth cycle so mm -hmm. it's it's almost like it's the new beginning so that that for me is more of a it's more of a passion and it's an emotional attachment to all of it mm -hmm. because they become they you watch these plants grow mm -hmm. you're out there tending to them every day yeah every single day yeah 
for me, it's a little, it's a little different in the, in the sense that since I spend so much time outside, I've spent my entire life outside, and as I get older, I, I really don't like the the colder weather. You get older, you get colder. So it's so it's the it's the signal that 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 I know, you know, when we're thinking garden and, and we're monkeying around with the garden in the spring, that the dreaded winter is over. Mm-hmm. So it signifies yeah. a you, rebirth. You, 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 you know what I mean? And then mm-hmm. so seasonally, it's kind of neat too because at, you know through that 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 whole period you have. So that starting point is just like okay, it still may snow one more time, but I don't really care at this point because now I know. You know, we're going to be averaging 50 degrees every day. You know, yeah. at some point, you know, weeks prior to that, 40 was starting to feel good. Right? Right, right. <laughs> so it's a signal, though, that, okay, it, it, yeah, this is over. Like, well, I survived another one. And, and, yeah. and, and, and we're going to, you know, we're going to ha- have life again. And then, and then it's the anticipation of what the reward is of, you know, of the work. You know, you put, you put your vegetables in, and I can't, like... So I'm now buying tomato plants that actually have tomatoes on them and putting them in <laughs> so I can get them as early as I can. You yeah. know, so seasonally, you know, you know now when you, 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 you plant a plant, which I actually get them from a local garden or local farmer. Um, there's a really neat place up at Davis Feed Mill that's up in Bucks mm-hmm. County. If you've never been there, it would be, it would be worth the trip because you want to literally go back in time generational you know families still in there and they literally have supplying you know feed and seed you know to, to all the uh, rural part of Bucks County who still has horses and goats and, and but but they're you know that farm life and all that stuff and so they have a local um, grower um, that they're confident in um, they literally give them to you almost at cost just 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 to do so um, so it's kind of fun you go there and you um, you know, I don't want to call it lazy, but I'm, I'm bringing in tomato plants that actually have tomatoes on them. <laughs> so, but again, it's just to speed up, you know, to speed up what, what the reward of that is. Right. Yeah. You, you, you yeah, know what I'm saying? So, but, uh, but yeah, so it's, you know, the, the garden stuff for me, um, like I said, it, 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 it signals, you know, time. Um, and like I said, the anticipation of what, what the benefit of, what the reward of it's going to be. When those cold weather crops go in the ground, you're both, you're, you're, it's, bo- it's a light in both of your lives. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Oh, absolutely. And that's, then that, that's the beauty of gardening is there are cold weather. There's, there's, there's multiple months of multiple yes. crops that well, came all the way up through the fall. And I think that that, I mean, it's, it's the earth giving back all the time. Well, mm-hmm. and part of it is too, like, like here, um, you know, then you will get to see, you know, gardeners that, you know, that you converse with you know through through the season um they've been hibernating for for four months mm-hmm. you, you, you know and you don't you're not seeing them here and then i'll come in one day and i'll see lisa carpenter you know she's in mm-hmm. there and she's got you know she's got her early stuff going in and you know it's a, a, again it's that you know re- it's a camaraderie yeah and it's, and it's, a, and it's, it's every, really is year. it's really yeah. is community it, it, yeah. to the true sense so dan who's also one of the other gardeners yes, he and i friends. are So I buy my plants from a couple, young couple in Audubon, New Jersey, who starts everything from seed in their basement. And they do it out of a labor of love. And they focus specifically on tomatoes. They have, I think, 30 different varieties of tomatoes and peppers. Mm -hmm. And I buy from, they only sell the two weekends in a row at the Burlington County Environmental Center. So I should run over there and I pick them up. Well, this year, um, I sent Dan over, too. Uh, we both planted tomatillas for the first yes, time. he told me. And so the two of us were back and forth because we had this such a challenge with these the cu- uh, cucumber beetles. Oh, they were terrible this year. And I'm in his plot at 6.30 in the morning squishing the bugs. He's in my plot later in the afternoon. So the two of us took care of each other. And we and the and it would go beyond that. I found this recipe. I just tried this. So we've been information sharing mm-hmm. on a lot on a multiple levels to the point where we're actually putting something on the table that we've shared with each other. And okay. I think that that's where the that's where I love a community. Yes. Yeah. The newfound relationships with people that you would never, you know, they may be just walking through the property or whatever, 
Uh, my son kids me all the time. He said, if you ever stop talking to people, we could get work done. But, but <laughs> He's it's the mayor. The, but it's, but it's, <laughs> Honestly, it's the social, the mayor. <laughs> it, it literally is this, you know, it's the social, uh, you, you know, uh, event also. Because you think about it, you, you know, if that's if that was the reason, the common denominator that it brought you together to somebody that you truly, you know, enjoy speaking to, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's, it's a fun thing, you know, it, it, it's, it's a win-win. You, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. More than likely, you're, you're, you know, you're working on something that, that, that everybody has a common interest in. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, yeah, it's just there's there's no downside to it. Yes. No, and there is also, and I don't know if you've had a chance to speak to him, and I, I apologize for not remembering which group it was. It used to be SPIN, Special People in the Northeast used to have a plot, mm-hmm. but now there's another group that's run uh, by an SBR. A, SBR. And when I, I will come out when I see the folks there. Mm-hmm. that are in the garden because I used to work at United Cerebral Palsy before I was with the chamber okay. and I so I I am I love the the community I love the adult dis, the, uh, disability community because they're just are so they're just so soulful and um, so I would come out and talk with them all the time mm-hmm. and they would show me their garden and their pride of making sure that they're sometimes they just grow a bunch of flowers and some vegetables but they have two plots or three plots yeah and the fact that it's so it really does touch everybody mm-hmm. regardless of your ability regardless of of your your end goal it just brings joy and that's so to me when i see them out there i run right out <laughs> yes yes no they the way that you both talk about the elements all both of the cycles of life to use a phrase from another gardener i interviewed Gina hammond um and then uh, of plants and how meaningful that is to see every year and to participate in to renew the soil and then from that to talk to people um and build community i think that's a very see the, my typical follow-up question to you know what traditions characterize garden work is garden recreation but i think that you've already kind of answered mm-hmm. some of that recreation in terms of the recipe sharing in terms of the yeah. talking to people and getting to know anybody yeah. just passing through the property yeah. and those yeah. relationships will carry forward so i'm i'm looking to move back to new jersey so i'm going to be buying a house so but dan and i will continue to always mm-hmm. share ideas share recipes mike and i will mm-hmm. always share it mike makes this amazing pesto out of (laughs) honestly out of it's the best pesto i've ever had in my life and so there's that community continues regardless of where you're located right and i and i value that the most that i've really made friends yes yeah i think that's that's something that we want to capture too with this project is that gardens aren't necessarily just the physical space but also the relationships that you form and that those can go on long after yeah, no, for yeah. Sure. and I think that um, there's so much opportunity to be able to develop community gardens throughout the area and that's something that I would have I personally would volunteering jump in wholeheartedly uh, what was the one farm that just uh, that community garden that just closed down, the one that was out of business because of the money issue. Was that over, was that in West Philly? You, oh, you're, think, you're thinking of one in West Philly. I was thinking of one in like Kensington. Is that but, the one that had their, they, they, were, they were in serious financial trouble? It was in the paper and I had not even heard of it before. And it was a nonprofit that had a farm and had animals the animals were not treated well and oh. it was yeah I was in the inquiry about a month ago and I'd never heard of it but I think that there should be more community garden projects uh, all throughout the city all throughout the suburbs all throughout the state <laughs> I want to go back and start one in South Jersey because that that uh, because of the fact that I never had this experience before I was always a soul gardener that I want to be able to continue something like that. Yes. Yeah, and I think Meg also had an inkling that, that because of a lot of our visitors here at the time, other than the, the party guests, were coming in from um, the nearby condominiums that, you know, the only thing they, they have is pots on the porch. Yeah, they don't have, the, or the apartments. Yeah, they don't there's, have... no, there's, there's no, you know, right. they don't have, and, and a lot of these people are elderly you know, that, that had the same kind of values and grew up with these type of things. Because, you know, th- there's never, there's never a, uh, uh, it's not a hard sell. The, 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 you know, there's actually yeah. a waiting list for, for plots now. 
Yes. There's even been talk. I don't know if it'll happen or not, but there's even been talk of expanding, expanding it. Expanding it. Her, yeah, I heard yeah, that. Too. I mean, I've tried oh. in the past. I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of sure if, if Meg was still here, um, and not saying in any kind of way or whatever, but it, it, it probably would be expanded. We had talked also about um, putting in an orchard um, mm -hmm. because there, there, were, um, there were fruit trees that were on the property. The very last one fell two years ago. Yeah. La very yeah. last apple. So, so there was, yeah, because, you know, the lifespan of those, they're not going to, they're not going to last a hundred years, you know, like some of these other grand champions, but, uh, yes. yeah. you, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, so there, so there was, you know, there's talk of that. Um, I but. have to tell you, I, yeah, I don't know how the future of at the expansion here, mm -hmm. but one thing that if it was, that I will move forward with, if I have an opportunity to help develop community gardens is I really would focus on making sure that there's an educational component mm -hmm. it, like if I was to take over this garden okay and and have it somewhere else I would have all the community gardeners not just independently come in and take care of the garden like we all get together and we all chip in and do this we all like I think I would develop a little bit more of a of an active community <laughs> Dan and I connect and I, I, Lisa and I don't because we're on different schedules, uh, but Nike and I connect. But I think that there's an opportunity to really develop a program with for the A for the gardeners and then B for other outside sources, whether it be the disability community, whether it be for children, have one or two plots mm -hmm. that are literally educational. Come in, show show somebody what a, uh, a cucumber beetle is. Yes. <laughs> you, you, you yes. Understand and what the impact of the lantern fly is on the grapes. Mm -hmm. I think that there there's so much potential. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is the area for it, but I think if the city of Philadelphia was able to come up with a place that had that, I think that there's. I, th I think it would change a lot, especially young minds. I think to me too, though, in, in any in any business, any organization, it all comes down to if you have the the, 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 the highest level of um, personnel, whatever, who's who's uh, involved with it. So whoever, whoever has the final say, if if they're a hundred percent in, then the growth of it could be whatever you want oh. it to be. But if they're not. Then it then it becomes again where it's just you know maintaining itself. You, you well, think about the grapes; mm -hmm. they're just literally growing, and then yeah, they die. They're not being they're not being utilized to what the purpose they were. Yeah. There should be a canning program. There well, that should be there should be a, a specific program during the life cycle of the grapes on the vine. Come in, take them. That's educational. Let's show people how to can. Let's do an event it. around it. I mean, there's so... I'm an event planner by trade. <laughs> but I mean that there's so much more expansion right. that could be Right. You, you could, that's considered. what I'm saying. There, 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 to me, there's, there's, there's levels of these things where they can they could grow just like the garden itself, where they can maintain, or they could just wither away. And it all comes right. down to, um, to me, is... is, is probably who has the final say into all that unfortunately yeah and, it may and everybody has a different vision meg mm -hmm. had a vision because she focused on the outside she focused on the property right. and i know since i've been here and i know obviously i know every blade of grass on this property i know because i have a dog i walk but i mm -hmm. i'm all over it all the time so if somebody doesn't have that desire to be in the right and it could it could and, and again that initial a pushback, you know, that this that the city had, you know, towards this, you know, was probably based on oh experience, I'm sure. You know, yeah, the, the, her experience of you know because they, I don't know how many um, properties that the Fairmount owns. I know it's quite a few. It's extensive, right? And so they get, you know, they see they see the good and the bad, and and maybe at that point in time, you know, the the, the you know the attentions would start out well, but if again if it's not organized, if it's not um, looked after if you don't have whoever the the, the, the the final say is you know keeping a handle on things that eventually you, you know these good uh, efforts just kind of go to yeah. you know you can't the fault pot. the city right. for he for the hesitancy you really can't right so but um you know it's uh, you, you and know, then you know. it won an award 
then yeah. they were very happy to be here to accept yes. the award. So I think that that's a great, that's a great full circle. Yeah. Yes. So um, that was a really great discussion about the landscape of Glen Ford and about ideas for potential community garden programming and the role of education in community building I, in active communities in particular mm -hmm. you're saying Pam yeah. and in leadership and in organizational follow through is yes. you're saying yeah, yeah it's yeah. important it has to have structure yes oh could, absolutely you know because it could just it could either just maintain it could fail or it could be yes. <laughs> it could be something you know yeah. off the chain it, yeah you know so it needs to be appreciated as a as a jewel mm -hmm. rather than an annoyance and yes. I think that, and, and this is not in indicating that, I'm just saying regardless of where it is. We're, mm -hmm. not, we're not talking about Glen Ford. We're talking about anywhere. Community gardens it, Any general. community gardens in yeah. general has to be embraced. It has to, has to understand Well, one part of that could be, too, if it, you know, if, you know, and I'm not saying it hasn't been done or whatever, but if, if, if you look at, you know, if, if the successful gardens are studied, you know, in a way that um, you could find a commonality between the success and then it's almost like you could you know kind of map out you know a successful plan you know as to as to you know what what would make a community garden succeed mm -hmm. and what are all the you know the benefits well, of it planning is the key to everything sure a vision has to become turned into a plan has to turn into mm -hmm. I mean, it's it can't be willy-nilly yes yeah and i know there are a lot of people at phs who are working on you know, studying what helps community gardens sure. and what, you know, what, yeah. They if you want to ever need a volunteer, you let me know. <laughs> Honestly, it doesn't matter. I still work over here. I may move back to Jersey, but I'll be working here still. Okay. So, I honestly, because I, I'm passionate about it. I can tell. I, I did not, ex I, like your whole stuff about active community gardens really was like thought, well, active community building. Active um, community and, building. Like, and putting in plot, an educational plot and using, the resources of the landscape for educational purposes, I think, is very eye-opening. But I do want to be cognizant of time, and I do have other things oh, that sure. I want to ask yeah, about. Oh, sure. Yeah, sorry. You <laughs> met the good. two talkative humans in Glen Ford yeah, sphere, yeah, this, so yeah. just <laughs> saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we've already hit on this a little bit, but I want to, you know, but you, again, you both have been here for some time, and you've talked about, you know, your struggles against pests. Um, and you talked about your experiments and what you grow, the tomatoes that you, the tomatoes that you get from up uh, at the feed mill and, you know, the plants that you get. From my, from yes. the little couple yes. that grows them in their basement. In Audubon, yeah, wow. Um, oh, and they're amazing. I want, so I want to go take this into like a more of a chronological question about change over time. Um, and since you know how has the garden changed since you first both started you know came here and started working here oh well i will tell you firsthand this year has been a real challenge because of the, the obviously the drought that we're experiencing and i think the pests have been i've not seen so many pests uh in the past years than we have this year and this was early on before we even were experiencing the lack of the rain so i'm not sure what change might be able to can address that but i think i think the pests have really the lantern flies may have diminished a little bit but everything else i've seen bugs including inside my house i've oh, never no. seen before and i have a, a uh, an entomologist is one of my closest friends, so I take pictures all the time, and I send them. Like, is this going to kill me? <laughs> you know, because it's—I've never seen anything like it in my life. So I'm not mm -hmm. sure what's going on, but something is. Yeah, I mean, I remember uh, I've talked to Dan, I've talked to Lisa. They mentioned groundhogs a lot, um, and in addition to in addition to the potato beetles, in addition to the squash uh, pests. So. Well, I think there, there's a solution to the groundhog in my opinion, right. and I've, I've shared it. Um, to me, I think that if there was, uh, if the fence would just be elevated a little higher, the actual, because right now the ground, I watch the groundhog climb up over the fence. And then when they're little, I watch them squeeze through. But I think if there's landscaping cloth mm -hmm. that air can grab, uh, flow through rather than plastic and attached at the bottom, I think that that would, so I think that there's, there, the idea is there, but I don't think the execution was on point. Okay. I don't know. What do you think? 
Yeah, I mean, there's remedies to, to, to some of these things. Part of its evolution, part of its, you know, global warming, you know, just the change of change of life, all that stuff. But, um, yeah, I mean, the, the good news was that um, a couple years ago, we because the, we, we, I, I wasn't convinced there was, a, there was an issue that at the, you know, midway through probably three seasons ago that um, everything really failed. Um, Lisa had thought that there was... Um, you know, maybe a f- you know different funguses and whatnot. And some of it might have been soil related and all those kind of things. That's a big thing. Yeah. So right. then we ended up, um, uh, we ended up with Ross, um, our director now, right. um, had figured out had a good source of, of soil. Um, we had that brought in, so we kind of s- swapped the soil out, and uh, and everything really flourished. Um, so this is be the. This is the second year with that soil because that was, was last year. No, it was three years. Was it last the year? soil was last year. Okay, yeah. So because my tomato plants were taller than I am. Yeah, so that was last year, but not yes. this year. Yes. Yeah, that was a soil mix that came out of. Um, uh, it was some, a mushroom farm. Yeah, it was, it was the byproduct of. of down of, by. Uh, you know, I'm trying to think of that area. Down whatever. by uh, Longwood Gardens right. area. What is that area? Yeah, Kenneth Square. So Kenneth Square. Kenneth yes. Square. Yeah. Yes. So so, but what it was though it was. It, 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 who, whoever, wherever, that, that it was mixed with a, um, uh, it was mixed with topsoil at the right rate. So it, mm-hmm. you, you know, what I mean, so somebody knew what they were doing with it. So so that soil really worked out well. Um, so that's going to be something moving forward too. That you, you know that that gets kept up with. Yeah. You, you, you know what I mean? So so there is more to maintenance too. You, you know what I mean? With pH and text in the soil and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But again, this is all, you know, levels of of involvement but that's where i think the gardeners can come together and have their mm-hmm. sense of community yeah. because they're yeah. invested already mm-hmm. that they could come together there could be a committee of the gardeners to be able to make sure it's testing because staff mm-hmm. there's only so much many staff to be right. able to do something but it doesn't but i think if the if the shift of responsibility is is on the gardeners and the right people who want to volunteer and expand on that i think that that's a recipe for success yeah i even have i even have uh, lisa in my phone as garden captain <laughs> so when she calls me it says garden captain so, so i'm not even calling her lisa all right because i i keep i keep prodding her to uh yeah. you know to uh to do more um she's, she's passionate now retired yeah she's she's really she's a very intelligent woman um she is passionate about what she does mm-hmm. and uh she's all in she would like to have a a, a end of year or mid year, you know, garden party with, you know, with the gardeners. See, that's right. going back to what right. I was talking yeah. about. No, she's all about it. And, an but, active community. An right. active community. Right. But it's again, you know. But there has to be going back to the. You have the, to have somebody the, who makes the decision has to encourage it. Has right. To you have to have the support it. inside. Mm-hmm. Right. Now again, uh, you know, it, 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 if the if the group is tight enough on its own. Right. You know, it, it, it's fine. It, you know, all those kind of things can happen. You, you know what I mean? But you should. You have to have email addresses, and you have to write because somebody comes in at nine, somebody comes in at ten, somebody comes over at the end of the day. Well, there is a list. Yeah. There is a distribution right. list. Right. So, but again, it's all. You know, it's. The community gardens to me are great. It's 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 what you want it to be. I, you know how how you know how great do you want it? Yes. You, you know what I mean? Any. I'm not saying any level is fine, but all, all the levels are you know are, are, are good yes any yeah any level of contribution which this is yeah so speaking of contributions to the garden your experience at the garden um do you have any favorite stories about the community garden and your experiences with over the past couple of years that you'd like to share mm, i don't know about that i mean you've mentioned already i think a lot of things uh the Meeting the people of SBR um, and just talking to the people who come to the garden, um, and I yeah. It, I think that that I would say you're you're meeting meeting the folks uh, and uh, and developing the closer relationships. There are a lot of gardens that I don't, uh, gardeners that I haven't met, mm-hmm. uh, or it's a casual walking past as I'm leaving and they're entering. Um, so the one relationships that I do have, I really value a lot, and they'll be long, everlasting. Mm-hmm. So we're already friends on Facebook, and yes. you know, <laughs> yes. I mean it's it's definitely something that'll move forward. Um, yeah. I think it comes down. To, I think my I guess mine comes down to the people, mm-hmm. the, the because we already are are linked together with a thread of a common interest. 
Yeah. And it's the relationships that are is my favorite part. What about you? Sure. Yeah. Same thing. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And the uh, again, it's you know it it's it, it's harvesting, being able to then take your you know your, the uh, fruits of your labor. Yeah. That's and, the and, bonus and, to right. the relationship. <laughs> right. And then you know, and then you turn it into you know yeah. to, to something good. You know. Now um, you know, I I find out from one of our gardeners, you know, if when I was, you know, raving about my pesto, like how to preserve it. And then I, you know, I would have never known. So I ended up putting them into ice trays. Yes. Freezing. Yes. Right. And then, and then they go into, into a bag. So now I'm, you know, I cannot eat spaghetti without taking a cube of pesto and mixing it with my fresh pasta. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, but, but again, I want to, I want to thought of that, you, you, you know yeah. what I mean? Like somebody, somebody's telling you, so, so, the, so, you're right, this interaction and passing along recipes and, you know, little tricks of the trade, yeah. you know, those type of mm-hmm. things. You know, it's a, it, it's a, it's a passion it, it, to me too. And it's also an escape from life. If you come, you know, if you, it, it's like anything else. If you come there, uh, you want to be there, you, 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 you want to be working in there. Um, sometimes it's, it's the solitude of it. You know, people want to come and they just want to go in, they find themselves, you know, I'll see Lisa, you know, if it's not too hot, um, you know, in there for, you know, an hour at a time. Oh, and I'll go at six in the morning. Right. But it's bringing her some, you know, some sense of, you know, enjoyment that, you mm-hmm. know, it's just a, 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 a happy place to be, mm-hmm. yes. you, you know, in this crazy world that we live in now, you, yes. you, you know what I mean? I don't want to call it safe, but it, but, well, but it is, I mean, there's a, safe. That's a good word. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're everybody, Solitude. everybody knows, you, you know what I mean? Certain people take walks places and do things or whatever, but it is. It, 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 there's an inner, you know, comfort that, that you know I think that comes from, you know, from from gardening. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned getting dirt under your nails, and there's I think there was recently like a study showing that like um, that that experience like helps you know calm your brain. Mm-hmm. So um, don't... it's like having fish, and I also have fish because fish <laughs> will actually calm your calm your entire being. Oh, it, it gives yeah. the same it gives the same effect is that wow. have a buy a fish tank and it will instantly bring down your anxiety level well speaking of future <laughs> plans that may or may not involve buying fish um <laughs> <laughs> never know <laughs> yes yes so both of you have been yeah as we've talked talked about all this interview have been deeply involved in this garden for the past couple of years um mike i know you're presumably going to continue working here um uh on the grounds the garden and i know you mentioned that you will be that you're planning to move back to jersey right however (laughs) i will still be working in northeast philadelphia so it is not uh, it it, i'm not closing the door of still having the community garden because my office is not far from here okay so this it's absolutely doable for me to maintain a plot in this garden right so what are your future plans for the garden both your cases well I've been hesitant and moving. Tomatea was my first time yes. having a tomato. So I'm now decided that I would like to be more experimental. So I've been more experimental with the varieties of tomatoes because I've been working with a grower that have varieties I've never even heard of. But now I think that I feel confident enough that I'm going to try something new next year. So to me, it's challenging myself to see what else I can learn. Yes. Yeah, I'm more of a uh, more of a maintainer um i'm willing to try new things i know what i like i can't get enough of it <laughs> so if i had it up to me I'd, I'd my whole plot would be you know basil but because <laughs> of the pesto right, right. Yeah, what, maybe with a few you need a pine nut tree. yeah i know yes, <laughs> yes. No, I, i'm using cashews now but, oh, uh, oh yeah. interesting yeah. well the nice thing with the cashews are you know, you can eat a handful of cashews while you're making the. You know, while you're you, you know while you're watching yeah. a ball game or whatever, and and it's like okay, you know, maybe I'll save a handful for my for my pesto mix. You, Interesting. You know what I mean, so it's it, it is a dual yeah. purpose there, the cashews. But anyhow, but uh, yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's it's just the uh, and again, it's just you know, it's it it, it just signifies you know life time of year, mm-hmm. um, you know, that 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 harvest. Okay, you know, it's kind of sad in a way, you know, when you finally put the garden down. Because then me dreading the winter, mm-hmm. you know, it signifies like, oh, no, here we, you know, not that we live in, you know, 
some Arctic, uh, you know, <laughs> area, but yeah, it's just, yeah. it's a, you know, but there's... And I don't find it sad. A, yeah. Right. It, it, I, I really don't, because yeah. it's like, you know what, it needs to rest. You know, when you make bread, the dough needs to rest. Yeah. It's, but, uh, so does yeah, the it, soil. You know, there's, right. it's just, uh, like I said, the garden, the garden's just a, uh, it's a, it's a great place, and, you know, for all, all the reasons we discussed. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and so looking forward, you're both planning to continue with basil, with tomatoes, with that pesto that probably deserves its own oral history. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And yeah. We need two plots. One just yeah. of basil. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and, you're and you're going to continue to think of ways to keep promoting the garden, sure. potentially, very potentially expanding it, um, and certainly thinking of ways to keep building active, to build active communities, um, and to make it and to make education happen mm -hmm. um yeah so thank well thank you both so much it's been an honor to learn from Glen Fork Community Garden we're honored that you have this yes. interest in doing this I mean, we're just two people old people that just like to talk but and <laughs> but I mean just for you to take your time on no, this man, project listen, is really meaningful to yeah, all if, of us right and if the bottom line is that these type of discussions and, and these events or whatever you know helps in, a, in any way you, you, you know what I mean pushing things forward you know helping you know understand it what works what doesn't all that type of thing um, you know it's a win it's a win for everybody really and now that you have my cell phone please keep me in the loop because if there are any other projects or anything that I can help with yeah. I'm not I this is my passion I can tell yes and I yeah I, I yeah that's a that's a really good note to end it on so thank you both I'm gonna turn off the recorder oh, sure. now